Hello, I am Jan Oberg, the director of the Transnational Foundation for Peace and Future Research, TFF, in Lund, Sweden. And I believe it's time for us to think more deeply about why do we have the war in Ukraine that has raged since February 24, 2022. We cannot keep on arguing that it shall be solved on the battlefield. It will not be solved on the battlefield. In a more broad framework, my take is that it happens because we live in a time characterized by two things combined, namely intellectual and moral disarmament coupled with enormous military rearmament. That makes our period the most dangerous since 1945. Militarism has become a religion. Nobody's questioning what the military does. And NATO has become its church. So everybody says we must win or the others must not win. They must lose. But what does that mean? And what is the price? <clears throat> For the Ukrainians, Ukraine must win in the sense that it recovers, gets back all its territory and becomes a member of NATO. For Russia, Russia must win. That is, it must keep to Crimea and to Donbass and perhaps more so that it sees that it is not threatened, feels threatened, and that Ukraine does not become a member of NATO. To NATO, it must win. Uh, by having the war fought for it in Ukraine, which is a cowardly uh, philosophy. But it must win in the sense to keep Russia down, make Russia lose in the battlefield, make Russia, uh, if, if you will, disintegrate economically and perhaps even politically as a state, the same way it, Yugoslavia did. Now, these are completely incompatible goals. They are idealist, ideal maximalist goals. They are illusions and they are played out at the war level and at the government levels. What I ask myself, what about the conflict, the underlying conflict level? And what about the people's, the citizens levels? Who is paying the price for this way of thinking? What we must do is to stop focusing on the violence and the war and begin to ask and discuss openly what caused it, what are the underlying conflicts that created the violence and the war, what were the problems that stood between NATO and Russia that they could not handle peacefully by negotiations, etc., but final end took to violence to solve, they're not going to be solved, but that's what they think it will. What are the root causes? Like a doctor does not just listen to where the pain is, but as where does the pain come from? What is the underlying disease or problem in the body that creates the pain? What we see at the moment is quack doctors in the military level and quack politics that thinks that the more weapons you pump in, the closer you get to some kind of solution. You don't. Peace is never the outcome of what happens in the battlefield. This means that as long as we think wrongly, this war will continue perhaps for years, God forbid. It'll be extremely destructive for all parties. Everybody will lose and we will destroy the economies, the livelihood and the welfare of the peoples, first of all in Ukraine, but also in Europe and in Russia. This war must stop. We must stop and begin to think what are the underlying problems and stop the blame game. Conflicts are problems to be solved, 
They are never solved by blame games and militarism. There's no example of it. The Ukraine war, finally, is therefore nothing but an exemplification of the world's classical security dilemma, the mind-bogglingly immature realpolitik paradigm with national military security based on conventional and nuclear deterrence, long-range offensive weapons that cannot but feel, make the others feel insecure. Whereas we say we have peaceful motivations, we have no nasty designs, when you can, your weapons can kill somebody far away, you always lead into arms races, you end up with warfare. We have to have defense and defense, that's okay. That's according to the UN, Article 53, if I remember correctly, right, 51. But you can't keep on having deterrence and long-range weapons of any kind and say that you are for peace. As long as this weapons-obsessed thinking exists, there can be no peace. Because if weapons could bring peace, the world would have been at peace long ago. Today we have the largest military expenditures ever. We have more warfare and very dangerous, probable war and maybe nuclear war in Europe. And we exhaust civil society so that we cannot solve the problems we need to solve, such as climate change. Therefore, we must have peace experts into the field. There is not one ministry of peace in the world. There is no government leader or head of state who has peace advisors, but they have tons of lawyers and military advisors. Finally, therefore, let's use the NATO-Russia conflict that plays out so terribly and tragically in Ukraine. Make us stop and think. Let's make it the last war before it makes our humanity the last humanity. Thank you very much.